Dear Mr. President, Since I came to your office to tender my resignation in 2001, you and I have not had any occasion to interact or communicate. I hope, however, you will still recall one of the observations I made about your legacy. I will not repeat it here because for me that remains a privileged conversation. I will, however, observe that I think you still have an opportunity to help create a foundation Zimbabweans can use to build a cohesive and successful nation. What compels me to write this open letter is the current state of affairs in Zimbabwe that has led to among other things, phenomena such as that of Pastor Evan Mawariah. Before I delve into expressing my thoughts on this issue, I want to quote something President Nayusi said on the occasion of his inauguration, an inauguration I know you Mr. President attended. Among other things President Nayusi said I congratulate Mozambicans for their participation in the success of democracy. At present, our individual choices of faith or ideology, and political inclinations are of least significance. I take office as the President of all Mozambicans and I stand willing and available to listen to all segments of public opinion. When I read President Nayusi's speech I felt a lot of hope for Africa. I proceeded to ask for his permission for my organization to post that speech on our website. By way of introducing his speech on our website I made the following observation. The way he, President Nayusi, frames his speech in many respects speaks to, and challenges the way many Africans have experienced the nation-state. African heads of state have, by and large, institutionalized states with at least two classes of citizens, the first class being those citizens who also happen to be members of the ruling party and the rest who chose other associations different from the ruling party having a de facto state as a second-class citizens. If President Nayusi achieves what he has articulated, his approach would be a major departure from the two classes of citizenship experienced by most Africans to date. Mr. President, I watched your reaction to Pastor Mawariah's hash this flag citizens movement and was intrigued. So I then took the time to listen to as much of what the pastor has said as I could lay my hands on and I was then really puzzled. Firstly, the pastor acknowledges your government. He has not said anything to imply he does not recognize your government, so he is not about regime change. Secondly he is appealing to his government, that is the government you lead, to heed the suffering of the population and do something about it. Thirdly, he clearly states that he is against citizens taking the law into their own hands and getting violent and destroying property. I just learned that ZANU youths demonstrated against Pastor Evan Mawariah and in support of the president and the government. I further learned that the police did not beat anyone during their ZANU youth demonstration. In contrast, a lot of the citizens who came out to support Pastor Mawariah were beaten by the police and Mawariah himself was arrested. Leaving aside that I am not sure what demonstrating against Pastor Mawariah means given no one can dispute the fact that the Zimbabwean economy is in meltdown, I would observe that the contrast between how Pastor Mawariah and the ZANU youth demonstrators have been treated is a very clear illustration of my observation about two classes of citizenship. In itself, it is good that ZANU youth can demonstrate when they have a cause to demonstrate about. What is clearly wrong and I dare say quite dangerous for the country's well-being is that the rights accorded ZANU youths are not accorded other Zimbabwean citizens. Moving beyond the ZANU youth issue, I would like to pose a simple question. How can it be that when Zimbabwean citizens have cause to disagree with their government they are labeled as not part of us at a national level? I understand that they are not part of ZANU but I cannot understand that their different views merit their not being considered to have a right to live in Zimbabwe and enjoy the rights of other citizens, as is their constitutional right. Who are us? Members of ZANU or Zimbabweans at large? Does it mean citizenship can be withdrawn on the basis of holding different views from the governing party? Is this not a very slippery slope indeed? Where are we headed if we go down this kind of thinking and practice? Is this not the kind of thinking that has led to genocide in other societies? 
Mr. President, unless I am missing something in this situation, I believe that it would be good for the country if you, as head of our government, engaged with the situation that citizens are trying to bring to your attention. Citizens are crying for help. They are not fighting you. They are asking for accountability and competency in the management of the affairs of their country as I believe is their right and obligation. There is no amount of outside intervention, support or assistance that will make Zimbabwe prosper unless Zimbabweans are united internally. I would like to persuade you to take to heart the suffering of the citizens rather than push back at them as if their pleas are not founded on the reality of a dying economy. Zimbabwe is blessed with amazingly industrious people. People, who are very focused, disciplined, hungry for education and very aspirational. We are also lucky in that we have a country, which is well endowed with natural resources. It would not take a cohesive Zimbabwe very long to bounce back and become again the envy of the continent. To harness the energy, imagination and innovativeness of the nation, we have to have a better tolerance and capacity for challenge, pushback and inclusiveness. We have to cultivate the capacity for synthesizing other people's views into our own to get synergistic multipliers in the national developmental effort. Subscribe to the Dreams of Zimbabwe channel on YouTube for more videos from the Zimbabwean Social Hub. Support us by donating to our patron page, at patron.com forward slash dreams.